Okay, um, so I'm a photographer. Uh, I graduated 2013 from Montclair State with my BFA in photography. Uh, but I also, I do st uh, still life, so my work is part sculpture and part photograph. Uh, the latest work that I've been working on is uh, objects dipped in enamel. Uh, mostly ordinary household objects, uh, anything from, okay. So I have everything from um, cheesecloth, used for straining, uh, tool fabric, old towels. I have um, like a, a, a dish Brillo pad, um, a hairnet, a wasp nest, some, some seaweed, things like that. So uh, I, I take objects that are organic or inorganic uh, and I dip them in enamel paint. Uh, the enamel paint hardens and it gives these objects a sculptural quality. It takes away all of their color and it just leaves the texture. And oftentimes, uh, like you can see here, the gravity you know, forces the object to pull down and it makes different shapes and textures. And uh, some, of the, some of these objects I photograph and I try to bring out uh, specific details in these pieces. Other ones, uh, more recently, I've just sort of been letting the objects live as objects rather than photos. So you can see over here, I have two pieces of lake weed that I've just hung on the wall, and I let them let them be be themselves and see how uh, how they are read that way. What made you come up with this technique? Where did it come from? The technique. My technique. Uh, I've always worked with with uh, ordinary objects. And I wanted to do something that, let me, re, let me start over there. Just talk, I'll edit it for you. Okay. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do something that would preserve the objects, but wouldn't, you know, just have them be themselves. I wanted, you know, to, to make them different, to make them more sort of ritualistic. My work is really process-based, so a lot of times I'm doing things repetitively or, you know, one object will, uh, you know, give me inspiration for another piece. So I wanted to do something that was going to make these objects different and also, uh, you know, make the eye see something other than what they are because I'm taking all the color away. Uh, you know, it's, it's bringing out the textures. I'm putting objects together that shouldn't belong together. Like I have a, a piece of brown paper with this tool and then when it's lit from behind, the tool shows through and it, it looks like, you know, scars or, or pieces of skin or something that's been torn over and over again. So it's really mostly an experiment at this point. Um, Nothing is really conceptual. Uh, I, my, my work was previously very conceptual, so now I'm just sort of letting the objects speak for themselves, and whatever the, the viewer gets from that is what they get from it, and it might not be what I intended, but it's part of the process. What do you enjoy more, the concept or just being free? Uh, I, I'm usually a very conceptual person, but it's been a lot of fun to just sort of make it, not, not a subconscious thing, but you know, the objects sort of become what they are through the process. I don't really have an idea. I have a loose idea, but it's never, it's never what it actually comes out to be. And uh, some of these objects, like when I, when I use the paint, um, if a piece of them falls into the paint, I don't get it out. It'll just, it'll be added on to the next piece. So a lot of it, um, you know, like I said, pieces speak to each other. They, they bounce off of one another and they become more, more and more. Any mentors? Uh, any mentors? At the moment, uh, old professors, but and you know some some colleagues that I've worked with. But I, I find that working with people that are on the same level as me and just being, especially in, in this atmosphere where I'm all, always around other artists, uh, is really great because you know you get to talk to people that are your contemporary and that are doing the same thing as you, and it's it's good. Uh, yeah.